Listening to Guitar Goddess Radio with Izina only on LA Talk Radio. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Guitar Goddess Show. I am your host, Izina, and today we have a very special show for you because in the studio we have Wendy Sweet Love. Hi, everybody. Hey, Wendy, how's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I am so excited, you guys, because we have a debut day today. We're debuting on Guitar Goddess, Wendy's newest CD called Dirty Sunday. And I I can't wait to, like, dig into the title and all that. You guys know how I feel about that. But I'm just so excited. We're debuting Dirty Sunday. She's going to sing a couple songs for us, maybe, if we can twist her arm. And we're going to hear some of the new tracks. So you're going to hear it first here on Guitar Goddess Radio. So, Wendy, tell us, how did you get started? My goodness, like, you're from Simi Valley. I am. You were a backup singer. You know, yeah. touring all over the world with with other performers. How did you How did you transition and go into your own thing? Well, I you know, I mean, I've always loved to be in front of the microphone and in front of the camera. We, my family and I always laugh about that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not that hard to get us in front of a, on a stage or in front of a camera. Um, but I think part of it is you know, you know, when you I moved to LA. I'm from Southern California, but I moved to LA maybe 10, 12 years ago. And, you know, it, there's so many unbelievable people, talented people, as you know here. And so some of it is about paying your dues, you know. Mm-hmm. And you, I love to sing, and I love to sing with other people. And so I took everything that was offered to me, you know. And so I got these wonderful opportunities to sing with some brilliant, brilliant artists that, of course, made me a better singer. And I was always on the side writing things. And, and, and so I, um, some of it's just... I, you know, you, you put one foot in front of the other and then yeah. eventually some, you know, things start coming to you, especially hopefully if you do a good job and you're kind to people and you show up and do the work, I feel like things start coming to you. So I got offered my first gig and I wrote a bunch of songs for it. And yeah. That's kind of how things started. Yeah. Wow. So you're coming at the, the industry from a little different position because you were a backup singer first, right? Yeah. I was, but I also was a writer. I started out as a as a writer of poetry, actually. Oh, yeah! Wow, so cool. I started out on the on the word side, really. Really, and most of the songs on the record started out that way as well. Like okay. I had an idea of something I wanted, really wanted to say. Yeah, and I actually built a song around it that way, which is sometimes a little bit backwards, but that's Not how really. that's how it came for me anyway. That's so cool. Yeah. And, and so, tell me about your your songwriting process. You know, does the lyric come first? Does the melody come first? Like, what's your process? Yeah. You know, it depends on the song. Yeah. Um, a lot of the songs, um, I had an idea first. Mm-hmm. Like Dirty Sunday, for example, which yeah. is the title track of the record. I was actually at a friend's house, and we had been up dancing and having drinks the night. That, the night it was like a Saturday night, and I spent the night at her house, and I woke up the next morning, and, you know, my hair was out to here, and my makeup <laughs> was all smeared. And, but I was happy. Yeah. I love those Sundays where you can kind of roll out of bed and... And so I was like, oh, it's Dirty Sunday. And then I thought that would be a great song. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. So that song actually came out of that wonderful feeling of, you know, being with good friends Mm -hmm. and like waking up the next day and feeling good and a little messy and you don't (laughs) care. Right. Um, So that song in particular. But then another song that I think you're going to play, Delilah, for example, uh, my friend Ido, who will be on in a little bit playing with us, we actually sat down, he and a friend, another friend of ours, they were just playing around with a melody. Mm -hmm. You know, so they just kind of did a little jam. And I took it home and I built the song around the jam and figured out what it wanted to say and what it meant. So that song actually started with the music. Wow, that's really cool. I love this because sometimes, you know, people have such a ritual and they write the same way all the time. And I love that you can write anyway. You know, it's like give you a melody or give you a riff or whatever. (laughs) And you're like, I'll take it and I'll shape it and mold it into this this work of art. That's cool. It's interesting because I, you know, when I was younger, I felt like I felt that like that was a bad thing, you Mm -hmm. know, because I always knew these people that wrote these beautiful melodies or played the instruments so beautifully. And so I always felt like there was something lacking in me. So it's been really fun to do this record and have friends like Ido and uh, because they've really encouraged me to come at it from whatever way. Don't be precious about it. Come, at, come about it from whatever way you can mm-hmm. and make something that you love and are proud of. 
and that's turned into a, a record that I am proud of, you know, but I didn't, I didn't see it that way at first. And so I'm happy that I f feel more comfortable in that and, mm. and actually enjoy the process now. I love that you said that because I think that a lot of uh, girls, like we have a lot of girls that write in, they mm -hmm. ask advice and so on and so forth. And, and I love that you said that because you are vulnerable and open to it coming any way it wants to come through the muse. You know, Absolutely. and not judging, well, you know, that it has to be this way or the other. That's really cool. I think that women in particular, um, at least that's been my experience, we're so hard on ourselves. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, I used to be, I sort of am, but I was part of this ma mastermind group with six women. Maybe five years we met every month, once a month, without fail. And everyone brought, everyone got their half hour or an hour of focused on just on them and we'd talk about whatever was worrying us and then we'd, we'd all brainstorm about it. Mm. And the th one of the things I took away is all these women were brilliant and accomplished and doing a million things and every single one of them was still like, I didn't get this done, hard on themselves. Yes. And it actually really taught me how to be kinder to myself, you know, because mm. I was like, oh, well if I think that way about them, then maybe I can cut myself a break too, you know? So I've in the last several years have really tried to come at a place of, well, this is my strength and this is what I do, so why don't I build something and find someone. If I can't do it, find someone to come in. Mm -hmm. It's a million brilliant people, especially where I, I live. You know, you always bring in the people Absolutely. that you need to bring in. So I, I'm happy that I, I feel that way now. <laughs> you know, it's so great that you say that because I feel like as women, like you said, we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And I think also being a musician, we also put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And we compare ourselves to people who have been playing since they came out of the womb or been singing since they came out of the womb and not really just honoring the gift that we've been given because they're all gifts. I mean, you have a beautiful voice, your Thank songs you. are beautiful, you. and you guys are gonna hear them in a little bit. But you know, I love that you're at that place where you're like, no, this is me, I feel good about me and in my offering to the world so congratulations on that well thank you it yeah. took a while and yeah. i have to say it's never the journey is never complete it's never I mean, complete i have those days where i you know especially i mean thankfully i work with a lot of brilliant people mm -hmm. you know that even the women that sing with me they sing back up and on the record but i get i get envy you know i get envy i get voice envy i'm like god her voice is so amazing <laughs> you know and, and i really work at trying to remember how grateful i should be for what I have and the gifts that I've been given and the opportunities I've been given and the support that I have. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you should ever take any of that for granted. That's so true. And you know, this month on the on the site, uh, we've been focusing on gratitude. So I'm glad you talked oh, about that as well. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like, I just feel it's so important for us as artists, you know, to just appreciate what we have and our gifts in our community because not everybody has that. And I just love so much that, you know, you're not only here today, but you're bringing everybody who worked on the record with you, that Absolutely. whole community, you know, and you've got Ido, who will, mm -hmm. you guys will meet a little bit later, who's here, who's gonna be playing with you. And I just love I love that. I love the music community so much. And I love when I see other artists who recognize that mm -hmm. and are in a place of gratitude for your gift and for your community. Yeah, it's really interesting because I know, you know, when I moved here, especially, it can be hard. LA. Yes, you know, it can be hard. Absolutely. There's so much competition. Mm -hmm. there, there can be, there are negative things about the business, of course. And I know everyone that has stories of frustrating experiences. But I also feel like it's amazing how generous the music community is here. Yes. It's amazing. I mean, people really, they really want you to succeed. Most people, they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they really want to be a part of it. They're generous. Um, Ido actually was my guitar teacher <laughs> to start oh, out with. We met awesome. through a mutual friend. And we joke because I was not a great student because I don't practice that much. And um, so I hear that a lot around here. <laughs> I hear that a lot. I think it's a woman thing because we're multitasking and doing eight billion uh, it's things. Honestly, it's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I do it when I can, but yeah. you know, you just get busy. But, but he's the reason that the record actually even happened in the first mm. place, you know, because he was like, let's do a record, you know, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, and I was kind of a wimp about it. And I was a little bit of a baby and he just kind of kept going like, let's make a record. Let's make a record. <laughs> and he's been a really true friend and, and, and he's, and he kind of kept pushing it. We, he helped uh, me find this wonderful producer who's a friend of her, his, who's become a dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And so it was, and it was this magical unicorn experience of getting these great people together and making something beautiful. Um, because, you know, someone came in that believed in me mm -hmm. and, and, and the music. And it was, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to me. Wow. I love that. I love that. And I'm just so honored that I get to meet Ido today yeah, as well. Yeah, he's the best. You know, and I want to go back a little bit. 
And talk about some of your musical influences. Yes. Because when I listen to your voice, you guys are going to hear, after we finish this, I'm gonna, I promise I'm going to play a song for you. <laughs> but um, let's talk a little bit about your musical okay. influences and how they came to be. Because they're quite vast. They are. Well, I was raised in the church. Okay. Right? So okay. my folks went to church. And we, when I was little, we went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So I grew up with a lot of hymns and gospel and, you know, those sorts of things. And mm -hmm. my parents grew up, you know, they were in the 60s, 50s, 60s. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of influence, like blues mm -hmm. and Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan, Peter, Paul and Mary, yeah. Joni Mitchell. So a lot of those sort of old folk singers that tell stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, so I had a lot of that in my blood when I started. And my, I had two aunts who were both PhDs, and one of them's a poet. So I kind oh, of wow. come by the, wow, wow. yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're both amazing. And my mom's brilliant, and she's also a great writer. So I kind of came by, and she was a teacher for wow. years. So I came by this a little bit honestly. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, but I grew up, so when you hear the songs, a lot of my songs have church influence in him or a little bit of gospel in there or some sto um, storytelling, mm -hmm. songwriting, mm -hmm. some blues. So it's all been absorbed for sure. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. I want to play, I've been teasing you guys, so I want to play um, a song off of her debut CD, Dirty Sunday. I want to play a track called Babysitter. Oh, the song's so fun. Tell us about it. How did it come to be? Well, this song actually is one of those funny things. I was watching the television, watching the television, who says that? I was watching TV, and um, this new, one of the, new, like a news teaser came on, yeah. it was like tonight at 11, and it was literally said something like, does your babysitter have a, pa a dark past, or does your oh babysitter, my gosh. you know, where they're trying to terrify yeah, you. Yeah, terrify the parents. And I thought, you know, and I thought, ooh, babysitter's got a rapture, I thought, wouldn't that be a great song? <laughs> and so, when I first was thinking about it, I was like, oh, that'd be so fun, but uh -huh. then I started thinking about, because, you know, the babysitter meme is mm -hmm. such a sort of, you know, they use it in porn and they mm -hmm. use it, it's a very cliche sort of thing about who's good and bad. And mm -hmm. I started thinking about what it means to be a woman and what does it mean to be bad and what does it mean to try to be good and I feel like we try too hard not to upset people sometimes. Yes. Preach. So while, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, it's something that I still struggle with yeah. and so, the song became for me a little bit of an anthem about you know like you can't have this anymore you can't have this meme anymore you know it's, it's you can't you can't have this you can't have it anymore for us we we're not sorry yes yeah, sorry not sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that, that's that's what the song's about really oh i love it Thank you guys you. ready like after an intro like that i'm like okay <laughs> all right here we go all right babysitter <laughs>
Babysitter's got a rap sheet. I <laughs> love that line. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, that's so Thank much you. fun. It's that really was, fun to sing. Wow, that was awesome. I Thank love you. it, love it, love it. So this album was produced by by Drew Sherrod. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he's amazing. He's out of Nashville now, but the, oh, okay. they were in L.A. when we started the record. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I think Ido had worked with him for years on other projects. And we we had, we had were trying to find the right person, and we sat down with him. And he was, just from the beginning, like, completely on board. You wow. know, he was just so in it. And the poor guy spent, I mean, he just, we had a whole meeting once, a whole night on what cover song to do you know I mean he was just so in it and he was invested he was involved in the graphic design and wow. he was such a he's such a kind soul um, so it was a really wonderful experience uh, you know and we just kind of all became obviously we spent a lot of time together mm-hmm. we became really good friends he and Ito and I you know night after night talking about this and yeah. what about this and the songs and so um, I'm very grateful to him that's awesome. And and tell me a little bit. You play guitar as well. I do. And tell us about your guitar playing. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, Ido and I we joke about it a lot because I'm not a I'm not a professional player. You know, I'm not a studio player. You are so a guitar goddess. I, I am a guitar goddess. Own it. Um, I do. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I love I love to play. Yeah. Um, and it's it's one of those things where I've been playing in bits and pieces for years you yeah. know I'll pick it up and I'll and I'm my own worst enemy as I'm sure a lot of people are right. you know I pick Me it up too. and I'm like that's terrible and I put it down for a while and then I pick it up and I'm like that's terrible and I put it down <laughs> so I'm really working on Ida's like you play you do play stop saying you don't I'm like okay you're right so I'm, I'm really working on owning that yes um, I love the guitar it's such a beautiful instrument you know it's such a and and I my dad actually when I was a little girl my dad used to sing folk songs to me he'd pick up the guitar and sing folk songs to me there's a picture I'll see if I can find it of I mean I'm a little tiny baby like in a stroller and he's playing the guitar oh my gosh no I know I'm completely daddy's girl yeah so I had it in me from a young age Mm -hmm. you know the love of music Mm -hmm. and the it's it to me it's it's my church you know it's it's greater than some of its parts you can Mm -hmm. put these chords together and they're just three notes but God, it moves you yes you know it moves you to another place and that's what's special about it for me Absolutely. And what type of guitar do you play? I have this beautiful Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, an acoustic Taylor. And I, it's a smaller body because my I have little stubby little arms. You don't have stubby <laughs> arms? Well, they're, they're not. Uh, they're, they feel like they're short. So Look at how long her arms are. And she's like, I have short, <laughs> stubby little arms. This is what I'm talking about, women. We I know, always we do are like, all the time. Oh, oh, this old thing. Like, <laughs> I know. No, no I know. you're gorgeous. You know what? I have perfectly great arms. Yes, you do. But I'm not very tall. Okay. So I like the shorter, the smaller body yes, because it, yes. it, it doesn't make me feel like I'm reaching around so exactly. far. Exactly. Yeah. And also because I'm a woman, mm-hmm. I I can't press the guitar that far it's up against so me, true. which is so weird. So I kind of have to, it can't be that big or I can't reach all the way around it. It's so true. You know, it's so funny about guitars because this is why I'm passionate about guitars and guitar goddess and all the females that play because the instrument was not made with us in mind at not. all. It was not. You know, not even close. And so there are a few guitar manufacturers, shout out to Tish over at Daisy Rock Guitars, um, who make, you know, guitars that fit our bodies, but most of them don't. They don't. You know, I used to have a Gibson and that thing was so heavy. You know, you put that on and you put on high heels and you get on stage and it's like, that's the workout before yeah. you've even sang a note. Yeah. So I totally get it. Hurts. Right, right. Your back hurts and you're like, oh, my God. So I don't play with the Gibsons live anymore because mm. I just can't, you know, I can't do it all, you yeah. know. And you I, pick uh, your battles. You yeah, your you battles. pick your battles. Absolutely. You p- absolutely, absolutely. So you have your tailor. I do. And uh, do you compose on that? I do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, um, it's, you know, because it feels good in my arms, right. you know, so I'll pick out. I will. I'll, I'll do something simple usually, and mm. then I'll bring it to someone like Ido, who's a, a brilliant guitar. He played all the guitars on the record. Oh, my gosh. Every Virtual, so. Yeah, he's so Woo. wonderful. Wow. And he can do any sound, and it makes everything sound great. So I will often bring an idea to someone that ha- you know that can be like, what if we get to go to this, the minor seven? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he comes up with these great chords, and I just would never, I, oh, I never would have thought of that. Yeah. And it makes the song better. It makes it go somewhere else. So I found that that's more fun for me then, is if I get a, a bass going, and then I'll bring it to someone who has can like give it that lift or yeah. give it that really cool thing or oh gosh I didn't think of that um, and that make that makes songwriting so much more fun for me oh wow I didn't think of that what a cool idea let's build on that yeah yeah, yeah. 
I love that. And let's let's talk a little bit more about that because some of the girls are afraid of collaboration. Oh, um, so I like to talk to people who collaborate and co-write mm-hmm. um, because just to let them know that it's safe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's nothing to worry about and no. it's fun. And I love you. You're like, oh, he had this idea and that idea and then it came together and you heard what you heard. You know, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. So talk all, about it. All my songs are collaborations yeah. actually because I just, I just feel... I always feel like the song goes to a more interesting and better place. Yeah. All the lyrics are mine. Mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very yeah. particular about my lyrics because that's you know. You, I, you're I telling the story. I'm telling the story. Yeah, so you um, gotta feel it. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I personally, and again, it was one of those things. I felt like it was a negative about me for a long time. You know, I'm not a real writer. I mean, all those things that you tell yourself mm-hmm. that are completely not true, mm-hmm. but we do it anyway. Um, and then when we started building this record, and it started becoming like when we first did the first rehearsal. Do you remember we had our first rehearsal? And we ha- some of the songs had never been played with the band, and they sounded. So- I mean, we got these beautiful musicians, mm. brilliant musicians: Carl Byron, Carrie Griffin, Ryan Roberts, and Ido, of course. And they the songs came alive in a way that I had no idea they could even sound that good. Wow. So beautiful, and so some of the things you hear. Uh, there's a song called "Come Inside," which um, is on the record that'll come out next week. The whole so- <laughs> there's like, there's this guitar solo in there and this sort of breakdown and that just literally came out of rehearsal. They just started playing and I was like, "Don't touch it! Don't touch it! That's perfect! Don't yeah. do anything." Um, so I think that collaboration really sharpens you. Um, it you know it makes you I don't know for me it makes me a better writer. It makes ideas come that wouldn't have come. It sparks something that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, I will say that you know I for these songs and if you want to get into a technical place about it, I, I have everyone, when, as I, I actually signed the record to a, a licensing company recently, mm. so oh, they're nice. going to be shopping for film and TV, wonderful, yeah, music wonderful. alternatives, which I'm, thank you so much, music alternatives, Beautiful. I'm very thankful for, um, but I had ev- all the co-writers signed over to me that I could shop the songs on their behalf, so there, there can come on, at the oh, end nice. of that, there comes a little bit of like, who, you know, want to make sure you, exactly. it's your song that you are able to do with it what you want. Mm-hmm. But for the creative process, I love collaborating. I think it's amazing. And especially <coughs> if you're starting out, mm-hmm. I think it's a great way to start because you get, you get other people's opinions, you get other ideas, you think of things. Like, again, ideas mm-hmm. come. And what's the harm, you know? What's the harm in bringing another mind in to see what can happen? Absolutely. I think a lot of the fear comes from splitting. Yes. How are we going to split this thing? And, uh, you know, I think there's simple ways to do it, and there's complicated ways to do it. How how yeah. would you advise? I, I, well, I do. I mean, I think legally, if, you know, if you're uh, sitting in a room when a song is written legally, unless you have a separate agreement, it's my understanding that just everything gets split. Mm-hmm. So I just split everything anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I, I mean, unless you literally write the song and, you know, you have some sort of understanding for me, if I sit down with you and you create a song with me and that song has a life, then you, you know, it wouldn't have happened without you. So yes. why wouldn't you, I don't know, for me, it's, you share it. Absolutely. And it, makes it, it's, it makes it, why not? It make, everybody's happy. Yes. Everything's understood. It's, mm-hmm. And then there's, <coughs> you know, you honor people's time. <coughs> I think it's important to honor Absolutely. what they've given you. And then there's nothing to fight about. Absolutely. You know it's I mean? so true. Especially when you handle it up front. Agreed. Excuse me, I have a very dry throat today. No, it's, so a, it's, it's, it's it's dry out there. Yeah, today yeah. the weather, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just coughing. So <laughs> I apologize, everyone. I've got water over here, but not to take away at all from what you just said. I think that's really important to not fear collaboration and to just talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to split this 50-50 or we're going to split this however many people are here contributing contributing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a million ways to do it, but the thing is to not fear it, but to do it because so much beauty can come from collaborating. I agree. And most people, again, you, you're you always going to hear stories. You're always going to hear mm-hmm. like horror stories of this terrible thing happened. And those stories are out there and you may come across a person that you don't want to work with again. And that, that happens and mm-hmm. that's okay. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you have to walk away from things that you don't want to walk away from. But in general, everyone that I've worked with in Maybe, I mean, thankfully, I've had no, you know, everything's been wonderful. People are, especially if you treat them fairly, yes. people are generally like, cool. Yeah, You exactly. know, I told everyone like, hey, 50-50, they're like, cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I thankfully on this record, I we, ha- we, haven't, we haven't had any trouble and, and we've tried to handle everything as respectfully as possible. Mm-hmm. I think when you do that, generally you avoid most issues. You Absolutely. Know? Now, of course, I'm not in the upper echelons where the lawyers get involved and things get a little trickier, but... Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think if, you, if you're honest and handle things with respect, I think you can avoid a lot of problems down the road. Absolutely, and it all starts in the writing room anyways before mm -hmm. the lawyers get involved. So of course. as long as you've sorted it out, they just have to adhere to that. Of course, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. So that's really, really cool. Now, your debut album yeah. is Dirty Sunday will be released on the 17th, which yes, is right next around the Friday. corner. I know. Oh, my gosh, you I'm guys. I'm so excited. And your, your release party is going to be yes. at the Hotel Cafe the, the Hotel day Cafe after. Hotel Cafe the, the day 18th. after our release show. We're playing uh, with our full band. Um, and I'm, I'm really, we've been, <coughs> bless you. It's been a Thank long you. time coming. So um, we started rehearsals last week. Wow. Uh, it's and it's been it's been great fun. I mean, when you when you bring in, you know, it is when you work with really great people. Yes. It's like, oh well, that was a delight. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's that do was, this again. That was soon. easy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That, yeah. Okay. Let's do it again. Yeah, I mean, it's it been again. it's been great. So I'm it. so so excited. And tickets are on sale. If anybody wants to come out, um, you can go to Hotel Cafe website. There's a Wendy Sweet Love show on the 18th. From we have a block from seven to nine. Alana Al Alana Sweetwater is opening for me. Ooh, yeah, and she's fantastic. So it's the battle of the sweets. I love it. Yeah, there should be like dessert everywhere. I know. Now. Pick oh, your sweet. That's a good sweet. idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> I always go for the sweets. Every every launch party, there's cupcakes. I don't know what my thing is with cupcakes, but because cupcakes are awesome, right? I always go for the booze. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, hilarious. Cupcakes are nice. I go for the whiskey. I love it. I love it. Say, I want to bring in Ido, your guitarist. Yeah, should we do a song? Can we bring, yes. Ido, we've been talking so much Everyone, about you. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up virtually for Ido Sasson. 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 I, like, I should say Sasson. That's good. So, Ido, welcome to the show. I have to say, Wendy is a much better guitar player than she gives herself <laughs> credit. So, <laughs> just put it out there. She can Thank play you. really well. Thank you. I know she can play really well. You know, it's so interesting because we always downplay our skills as women. Yes, I, I had this one girl come on the show, just a side note, this is really funny. She came on the show, and before she came on the show, she was like, you know, I don't know if I really should be on a show called Guitar Goddess, because I can only play, you know, eight guitar chords. And I'm like, what? And you hear her burning up all over her oh YouTube. Like, she's just killing it. She's just wailing and doing all this incredible stuff. But to her, she didn't feel that she was worthy because she could only play eight chords. And I'm like, girl, what you do with those eight chords <laughs> is incredible. So, yes, you're definitely, you know, a goddess. Get your butt over here. So. It's, ama it's amazing the thing. It, it's too bad. It's too bad that we don't celebrate ourselves more. I try. I really I'm do. trying. I know. I'm trying to celebrate well, all of the guitar goddesses. And oh, well, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. It's really fun. Yes, I'm excited. And, and you are playing a Honer guitar. Yes. Uh, this is actually a, an acoustic guitar from the 70s. Really? Yeah. I and love that. I remember when I was really, really young, mm -hmm. I heard Prince play. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Of course, I yes. dug in to see what he was playing. Mm -hmm. It turned out the guitar that he played the most was a Honer Telecaster from the 70s. Wow. So I started collecting Honers. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you have to do no. what Prince does. I know, exactly. right? Everybody has to do what Prince yeah. does. That's right. That's so right. I have three of them now, two electrics, one acoustic Honers from the 70s. I love them. They're great. Wow. Well, you guys, uh, Ido is also a teacher, and I'm going to link in the in the description. I'll link his info if he's uh, taking students. He's highly, highly recommended. He's a wonderful teacher, honestly. He's he's a wonderful teacher, and I would highly recommend him. And he's a good friend. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. Awesome. awesome. So, what are you guys going to play for us today? Well, th we're going to do a song called Shadow Sun. Today's actually my mom's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, happy birthday mommy. mom! I hope, I hope you're watching. watching. <laughs> happy birthday! She might happy not be because she's was doing b fun birthday things, which I hope she's doing. But this is her, I think, one of her favorite songs. Oh, probably because some of the other songs are a little sexy. Okay, and she's and you're she's still a little her little girl. girl. I know, I know, I completely understand. But this song, I know she loves, and this song, um, it's called Shadow Sun. And I wrote it with a friend of mine named Moses Toth. And this song is actually, um, especially with everything going on in the world, it's a little bit of my war protest song, but it's from a woman's perspective. Because, mm. you know, you, there's a lot of, you know. Absolutely. We, there's a, we talk, talk a lot about war. We talk a lot about the military. And a lot of the protest songs were written by men, sort of about soldiers. And <clears throat> this particular song is more about the people that stay behind. So, I mean, obviously, I know there's a lot of amazing, amazing women soldiers who have husbands behind. So 
I, I, I don't I don't mean to make it exclusive, but in this instance, it was I was thinking about mothers and girlfriends. I dated someone who was in the military, and I started thinking about his mom and his, mm. and his sisters and people that you would leave behind, um, and the collateral damage that you don't see. Yes, you know what I mean. And, Absolutely, and, and, and all the brave wives and mothers and sisters and girlfriends and and that have sent someone off off mm -hmm. to some place dangerous. Um, so this song is for them. Wow, this is beautiful. All Shadow right, you guys. Shadow it's a long way from a plastic plane to a bus stop in the morning. These are hard days. It's a mother's fate Eager boys, they love their war aim Go away now, son From my loving arms The years will take you far And I'll stay and burn While you march away down the barrel of a gun I don't want a shadow sun I want a flesh and living one a silver style right bright enough fame bright enough for me to see my boy to see my baby boy It's a long way from the bed we made Lying still in fields of morning These are hard days when your sisters pay Cause the first shot is a warning Sail away now, love, on my skin and fire your fear will take you far And I'll stay and burn While you march away Down the barrel of a gun I don't want a shadow sun I want a flesh and living one Silver star, right bright enough fame, bright enough for me to see my boy, to see my lover, hear us march and love our brother, hear us cry and duck and cover, cause a purple heart don't break, yeah, no, 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 purple heart can't love a mother. Papa heart can't love this lover But a papa heart never beat for me Only bleed for me And the red, white, black and blue I don't want a shadow sun I want a flesh and living one A silver star, right bright enough fame Bright enough for me to see my boy No, 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 no I don't want a shadow sun I want a flesh and living one A silver star, red, right bright enough fame Bright enough for me To see my boy See my baby boy. Hey. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you. Wow, that was incredible. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> just the words. You know, I know so many women can relate to losing their sons and husbands. Oh, I and know. All of the wars. I mean, I feel like my entire lifetime we've been in one war or another. 
<coughs> and uh, what a beautiful way to honor thank you. those families. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for that. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. How do you even like continue after I that? Know, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I mean, I should have gone with something lighter. No, no, it's beautiful. Oh, it's just you. you know, so it's thought provoking because you know, you're right. The songs are always about the men going off to war and and not really about the collateral damage. As you say, that they leave behind the wives and mothers and families that are shattered from, you know, yeah, losing so many families. Mm -hmm. And and even you know, even if they they come back thankfully alive you know that there's there's so much PTSD there's, yes. there's injuries there's Absolutely. so many families that struggle with that as well mm -hmm. which is a real thing you know and and I mean it, I feel you know it's it's cast a shadow on everyone 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 yeah for sure you know I was in New York when the World Trade Center happened oh my and God. Um, I just think about how that marked the city Mm -hmm. And, you know, every year when that comes around, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of hold my breath a yeah. little bit. And then I think about the military families. Like, how are they dealing? Because for me, it's an annual thing that comes mm -hmm. up where I go, oh, but what about the families where it's a daily yeah, thing for them? Yeah, I can't imagine. So thank you for that music yeah. for them. And I, I know that it's going to do very well, but I know the album's going to do very well. Thank you. Everything that I'm hearing is just gorgeous. <laughs> thank you and so much. You know, you're just, wow, a breath of fresh air. Oh, thank you. That's so yeah. kind of you. Yeah. I, I thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here and, and speak to another female musician and someone that's supporting other artists. It's such a big deal. And I really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you, too. You know, we're all a community. We're all one. And I'm just trying to use this platform to bring us all a little bit closer together so we can support each other. And I can't believe that this is just your debut CD that you have coming out. <laughs> I mean, you sound so seasoned. Thank you. Well, I've you been know. around a while. <laughs> Don't let the baby face fool you. I've been around a while. <laughs> uh, you 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 look like you're all of ten. But, uh, uh, I'll take it. I yes, am. I'm yes. su I'm super young. You're very very young, <laughs> and I think that's great. You know what made you decide at this point? I'm going to put out a record. Um, I think. You know, this is going to sound like a really weird answer, but um, I'm a big fan of therapy. Um, yes, I, I've been seeing someone for every day or every, every week for almost three years now mm -hmm. and it's it's everything in my life has shifted everything in my life has shifted and I think that if I hadn't been working with him I don't know that this record would have been possible because I don't know I would have been ready I don't know I would have believed enough I don't know if I would have you know I might have yes. sabotaged or mm -hmm. run away or um and that's that's the, the biggest, the, oddly enough, the biggest thing for my creative life and my career has been that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was a combination of that. I think a lot of things have risen out of that. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you know, and he tells me, the, the guy that I work with, he tells me, he says, things will start to shift and you, they won't, it won't make any sense. It's not like, you know, you won't understand. It's just all of a sudden people are going to start coming to you in a different way and responding to you in a different way. And it was right about a couple of years ago, Ido was like, let's do a record. And we just, we, like, let's do a show. It's just, it was kind of all of a sudden like, why aren't we doing this? Mm -hmm, I guess mm -hmm. it's a little, it, it's yeah. a, is the shorter part of a long answer. Why aren't we doing this? You know, and it just, everything fell into place. Everything, everyone that came in was wonderful. It was, I mean, wasn't it great? It was just. The perfect storm. It, it was, yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. But I really think that for, for me personally, that was, I think it gave me a, a foundation to be able to actually hold that space mm. and believe that I deserve it and believe that it was okay and believe that I was enough and all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, I think that's what it was. I love that because this is something that we're starting to talk about more, thankfully. Mm. We're starting to talk mm -hmm. about therapy and the effects for the creative community. It's amazing. It's amazing, yes. And you talked earlier about being in a mastermind group. Mm -hmm. So here you have a mastermind group or had a mastermind group. You're also working with a therapist. You find an amazing guitar mm -hmm. instructor that believes in you. And I think that's the really important thing that artists missed. You have to have a foundation. Absolutely. You have to have a foundation and you have to have someone to talk to about all the things that go on in an artist's head <laughs> it's true it's true it's you know it's it is an artist's head is like a tricky place it to be is. because you're sort of always swirling and you're always yes you know um 
having it having a, an advocate mm -hmm. is to me it's essential it's completely essential and it's been an absolute life game changer life changer for me and even before that I had like my, my mastermind group and, yeah um, I still am connected with those women we're just in a different way yeah um, and it's you know if even if you have one person that believes in you that's more than a lot of people have you know and Absolutely. so you hold on to that mm -hmm. I think until and then it's, it grows from there yes you know Absolutely. It's so important. I mean, I'm in several mastermind groups. I also host um, a few of them. Actually, maybe I should just open this up to you guys. I've never done that before, so maybe I'll add that on the, on the site as well. Um, masterminding is very important to get a bunch of women together. They may not all be in the music business. They may be in different, you know, my mastermind group, one of them, they're all corporate professionals. Another one, you know, you have some women that are nurses. You have some that are you know, selling Airbond, or it's just, it's a cluster of people doing different things, but out of that cluster mm -hmm. comes magic. That's almost what you want. You, yes. know? you don't want a bunch of musicians. Exactly. I, I can sit around with a bunch of musicians yeah. and talk anytime, about what's time. My anytime. group was the same. Yeah. Everyone, had a, everyone had a different profession. Yes. They were all creative in some fashion, yes. but, but the, everyone always, you know, there's something about the power of a collective mm -hmm. where we'd sit there and focus on somebody, and you know, this person would say, no, what about this, you know, and mm -hmm. they Every time somebody would have a, an, a way to look at it that we hadn't looked at it before, it was magical. I I, I miss it tremendously. I'm I'm hoping I'm still hoping that it's, it's going to resurrect or yeah. maybe something else will come along. That's like my next. I miss it a lot. It's interesting though, but as you change, your mastermind groups change. Of course. You know, like they say, new level, new devil. Mm -hmm. So, new level of people will come when the time is perfect. That's that's a good way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. So but that's like it's in on my It's on your radar. For a, la yeah. a lack of like a less oh, weird I love LA you thing so to much say. you said vision board. <laughs> oh my god. Are you like my sister from another mister? <laughs> I, I love I this so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, like you're saying all my things, mastermind group therapy. Then you said vision board. I, I thought it was I I was I always used to think it was like but I no. made one and it was like it was the coolest thing. Yes. And things start to show up. Right. Things start to show up. I, it sounds just silly, but I swear to God, things start to show up. They do. They do. Every time I make a vision board, my husband makes fun of me, but every time I make a vision board, about six months after, everything's done and I need a new mm -hmm. one. You know, or it shifted and I don't want it. You know what I mean? You know how you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I want this, and you yes. get almost there and you're like, oh, I actually don't want that. Like, I didn't really realize it was, you know, yes, this. Yes, of course. So it shifts. Mm -hmm. And I love this conversation so much because we don't have enough of this. I'm going deeper on this. Okay, so <laughs> therapy. Because <laughs> we don't. We don't. No, People are closed off. They don't want to share, like, open up. We're all artists. We all have a, a cineplex going on in our heads. You know, am I good enough? Does this sound good? What do you think? Like, what do you think is, like, the thing that drives me up a tree? But we always ask, what do you think? Was that good? Was that good? Okay, should we change? Should we? Sh it's all this doubt you know, as an artist, because when you're a gifted being and you have so many gifts, because everybody else around you, you don't see all of their mm -hmm. gifts, you think I'm the weird one. Of course. And you're not the weird one. No, we can, I, I, somebody told me once, you know, we compare our insides to everyone else's outsides, yes. which I know has been a saying for a long time, but it, I keep reminding myself of that because it's really true. Yes. You, know, you look at somebody on their, especially Facebook, you know. Oh my gosh, is, You know, the cherry, the cherry picked of the one moment when your kids aren't screaming yes. or you're not pissed off at your boy right, or right, whatever it right. is, you know. It's, it's so, I feel like it's made people, it made it harder for people to be vulnerable. It's mm -hmm. made it harder for people to say, I'm struggling with this or that because everybody does everybody right. does everybody's nervous and fearful and insecure about something and uh, you know it might be buried deeper than they mm -hmm. know but it's always there yes so the more we can talk about it especially for younger artists that are trying to come up yes and don't know what to do or feel insecure you know I think it's important for people to talk about these things like you know I've and been, it's I've okay. been working at it for a very long time absolutely Absolutely. And it's okay. I mean, there's therapy's not a dirty word. You know, it's a really positive one. I think, honestly, I think everybody, everybody should go find. So the trick is to find the right person. Right. Because you know? I know people that have gone to like bad therapists mm -hmm. and it's almost worse. Yeah. You know, so you have to find the right person. But if you find the right person, it is, it's, it's life changing. It really is. And it, and it changes your art. It changes mm -hmm. from a very, to the point where it seems like everything all of a sudden just starts coming. And then you forget about all the work you did every week showing up and being so uncomfortable and not wanting to talk about that or not wanting to feel that or whatever it is. It's hard work. 
it is hard work and it, it's so wonderful to do it because you can do it clean you don't need any drugs you don't need any alcohol you don't you can just do it clean and you can feel and you can create from this place of clarity and that's why i'm such a huge advocate for therapy masterminding vision boards vision quests journaling on and on and on like whatever tools you need meditation yoga whatever tools you need you know to keep you on your path and to stay on mm -hmm. your path so i'm yeah. excited yeah. that you're doing this Thank and, you. and um, we kind of got off a little bit, but I'm just, I'm just so <laughs> okay. excited it, that it's, that's because important. it's important yeah, to the it art. Is, it is important to the art, you know, because I think we see people who are like, oh, they made it and, you know, whatever. But you don't see the hard work and no one talks about the hard work. You don't hear people in interviews talking about, you know, I worked on myself. Mm -hmm. It's true. To get to where it's I am. It's true. And I, I've almost given up music a number of times, you know, because it's like, I'm like, I'm X number of years old and this and this and that. I mean, three years ago, I never would have thought that I'd be sitting here. I had this beautiful record. I never would have thought, really, never. Mm. And finally, some things were starting to come to pass. But mm -hmm. I put in, a, I really did put in a lot of work, you know, and I still am. Every, yes. You know, I'm. I'm tired a lot. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop. You know, yeah. you wake up tired, you go to bed tired mm -hmm. because you, you're you passionate about what you're doing and you believe in what you're doing and you're willing to do the work. And Although I will say for the first time, I'm really taking care of myself. Like I'm actually taking care of myself. I'm exercising, I'm eating Ooh, well. Good. I don't drink that much. I know it's a, it's a terrible musician thing to say, but it's true. <laughs> and it's it's made also made a huge difference. You know, I take care of myself. And that's why you look ten. <laughs> like you guys, if you could I see her it was in the studio, I was pure of heart. <laughs> you are pure of heart, <laughs> <laughs> but also you're taking good care of yourself, which is really important. You know, being on the road many, many years, you just see people just totally not taking care of themselves. Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah. I'm just well, going to leave it there. I know a lot of people that just don't deep down they don't they don't actually value. They yeah. don't know how to do it because right. they're so busy running away. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth for a lot of people, I think. You know, which is a shame. It's a shame that people will harm themselves because they can't bear to be with themselves you know yes. and I've been there I'm, I, I'm not making judgments I just I think it's maybe good to hear from someone that's been through it a little bit and come out the other side because mm -hmm. it is possible and that's important I think for artists you know absolutely absolutely and you're a shining example I just I'm in love with this body of work I want to hear more of it do we want to do another live song or should oh, yeah. we play Delilah whatever you like it's your show, That's babe. my show. It's your show. What would you like to share with Let's the community? Let's play Delilah because it's actually okay. out on iTunes right now. Oh, yeah. That, okay, it's been it's released. Ready. It's a, yeah, a single that I have out. And Babysitter actually is as well. So let's listen to Delilah because it's so much fun with all the beautiful band. And tell me about Delilah. Tell us the story oh, behind Delilah. it. Oh, Delilah. Well, Delilah's about temptation, Ooh, right? Yes. So you know the story of Del Samson and Delilah, yes. which, right, for those who don't know, Samson was this very, very strong man. And they, the... They were trying to figure out, his, his enemies were trying to figure out a way to bring him down. And so they sent in this woman named Delilah who tempted him and got him to tell her the secret of how, where he got his strength, which was his hair. And so then she drugged him and he fell asleep and then she cut his hair and he lost his strength. And, and it's been a cautionary tale, of course, you know, and that's the difficult thing for me about these stories is this woman who is supposed to be so terrible and so bad and, you know, yeah. and so Delilah is always told from that perspective. For me, <laughs> I like temptation, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a fun in it. And it, again, not like in a destructive way, but there's a, there's a fun, we, we kind of, we hate it and we love it at the same time, you know, and so there's because I grew up in the church and that notion of temptation which was always supposed to be bad and it was always came from this bad place I wanted it to be a little bit more joyful you know where the, there are things you can enjoy there are things that maybe you thought you couldn't enjoy that you can enjoy and and, and how complicated life is you know about there's a in the bridge you'll hear it there's a section of, there's like a hallelujah and then but I can't hurt anymore you know so that's and life has all of that in it, you know, it's the highs and the lows and everything in between. So that's what this song is about for wow. me. Wow. Here we go, Delilah. <laughs>
Lila by Windy Sweet Love. Debut Yay. right here on Guitar Yay. Goddess Radio. <laughs> <laughs> very excited, very Yay. excited. That was great. Thank you so much. That song's a lot of fun. I like it. I like the twist on it. Thank you. That's really fun. Thank you. You know, it's, it's cool how you take, like, the biblical stories and you make them, like, relevant yeah <laughs> your music so that's kind of fun i try well i actually i grew up in the church and i went to a bible college actually and i have a degree in biblical study so i like to call myself a biblical scholar which com- but it, it comes up a lot you know yeah. like, especially in things these days and and um and i I, f- I find that people are often very rigid in their s- in beliefs in certain circles mm-hmm. and that's hard for me because that's not how what i i came to understand you know some of these stories to mean so it's fun to take these concepts and play with them a little bit and kind of hopefully give them a little bit more joy and a little bit more life and a little bit more relevance and, you know, more humanity, I Absolutely, guess. absolutely. Well, this has been just an absolute delight for me. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. It's just a great show. Thank you, Ido, so much Thank for you, coming Ido. as well. Yes, we're very <laughs> grateful for you to have you on the show as well. And tell everybody where they yeah. can find out more about you. Well, my website is wendysweetlove.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter as Wendy Sweet Love. You can find me there. Um, next, you can find me also on iTunes and Apple Music under Wendy Sweet Love. I have two singles out, Babysitter and Delilah, which you heard. And then next, uh, next Friday the 17th, uh, the whole record drops. So Shadow Sun, you heard. Yes. And uh, what else did we play? Oh, no, I Baby guess we did those sitter. three. Yeah, Babysitter. Baby sitter. So all the songs are on the record. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the 18th, Saturday the 18th, um, we're playing at Hotel Cafe. The show starts at 7, and there are tickets on the Hotel Cafe website, and it's going to be an amazing show. So I would love, if you're free, I'm happy to uh, have you be my guest. Thank so, you. Yeah, Thank course. you. I'm very excited. So you guys... This has been a great show, hasn't it? I mean, we went deep. We talked about <laughs> therapy. <laughs> we talked about, you know, the military. We talked about religious religion. Excuse me. We went all around. We hit a lot of the we heavy did. hitters, didn't we? We did. I love it. I love it. We brought Ito in, yeah. and we put him in the mix. You guys can see. I'm sorry. You know that I have a sore throat today. I don't know what the deal is. But anyways, we have covered a lot today. It's been a fabulous show. If you want to rewatch it, listen to it go to guitargoddess.com you can watch it on the site tomorrow you can also find it on itunes you can find us at guitargoddess.com or everywhere on the web facebook instagram twitter snapchat at guitar goddess co until next time you guys keep rocking You're listening to Guitar Goddess Radio with Azina, only on L.A. Talk Radio.